This week, an article in JAMA Internal Medicine addressed the issue of industry payments to physicians and how these payments affect doctors' prescribing practices. In this particular investigation, researchers at the University of Toronto examined the frequency of brand name biologic drug use for Crohn's disease by physicians who are paid by manufacturers to provide industry-sponsored lectures or have received other types of industry-directed payments. Not surprisingly, those physicians who receive these payments prescribe these name brand biologics at a much higher rate as compared to those who receive no payment. This pay for play is not a new phenomenon. We all remember the days of orthopedic surgeons who met in the Caribbean on great vacations and were paid huge six figure sums of money as consultants to hip and joint manufacturers. And in turn, these physicians used only one type of joint manufacturer in all of their surgeries. These behaviors ultimately resulted in significant changes to pharma and the device industry. The AdvaMed regulations were created, and these limited what industry can and cannot provide to physicians and students. In a ProPublica publication from 2016, researchers found that in every single case, doctors who were paid by industry had a much higher prescribing rate than those who were not. While these types of analyses definitely do not prove cause and effect, because there are a lot of confounding variables, it does suggest a significant relationship between payments and prescription. Nationwide, nearly five in 10 cardiologists, sorry, nearly nine in 10 cardiologists wrote at least 1,000 prescriptions for patients that received payments from a drug or device company in 2014, while seven of 10 internists and family practitioners did as well. It appears really that no specialty is immune. To give you an idea of the scope of the problem, U.S. doctors and teaching hospitals received nearly $8.4 billion, with a B, dollars in open payments in 2017. This doesn't even include research funding, so think about those numbers. So what does this really mean? Well, I believe that a relationship between doctors and industry is absolutely necessary for progress to be made in developing new therapeutics and treatments for our patients. However, the actions of a few have really soured these relationships for everyone now. Many partnerships have been forged between my alma mater, Duke University School of Medicine, and the Duke Clinical Research Institute and industry over the years that have yielded significant positive impacts on patient care and patient outcomes. So some of these can be good. In addition, however, with falling reimbursement and declining salaries, many doctors are having to supplement their incomes with paid consultancies and speaking engagement. It's only natural. Most physicians, however, engage in these activities for the right reasons, but not everyone does, and that's the rub. With all that being said, in my opinion, we really need a complete overhaul of the pharmaceutical and device industries in the United States today. For example, I personally would like to see pharma and the device industry be forced to spend more dollars on making drugs and devices more accessible and affordable to the rank and file American as opposed to spending money to entice doctors to prescribe their particular drug. I would like to see government begin to take some of the power away from pharma. Why in the world should we in the U.S. be required to pay whatever the manufacturer desires for a new drug when in the Netherlands and throughout many industrialized countries in Europe, these prices are held in check by the government? Why should the U.S. pay for the bulk of the research and development dollars for pharma when these drugs are used all over the world? We need to look beyond payments to physicians in this situation. We need to examine payments made to Congress every day by the very powerful pharmaceutical lobby. We need to investigate these payments and we need to determine how we can limit the influence of the pharma lobby in Washington, D.C. Ironically, when some influential Washington politicians were debating how to deal with naughty doctors who received payments pre advamed they were meeting at a resort in the Bahamas in an all expense paid trip that was funded by, guess what? pharma and the device industry. So to wrap it up, yes, doctors are often paid by industry to speak about a particular drug. Yes, some physicians are influenced by these payments, but that is not the root cause and others share responsibility. Certainly, let's hold unethical physicians accountable, but let's also begin to hold pharma and the device industry far more accountable. Let's also finally, and most importantly, hold our Congress accountable and improve care for all patients.